Welcome to Lesson 3 of Module 3 on the Relational Data Model. I'm going to start with two questions, one conceptual and the other very practical, about your work in this module. I want you to think about both questions as you learn and use the Create Table statement. Why have DBMS vendors created alternative visual interfaces for the Create Table statement? How can a missing comma ruin your day? Lesson 3 continues your learning about the relational data model with a focus on the create table statement. You will use the statement to create tables in a relational DBMS and specify details about each column in a table. The next lesson will extend your knowledge and usage of the create table statement to integrity rules. Practice and graded problems will be based directly on the details of this lesson and the following lesson. The objectives of this lesson involve basic details of the create table statement. You should be able to write create table statements, specifying column definitions with data types. You should also be capable of reading similar create table statements written by others. The create table statement can be used to define the columns and integrity constraints of a table. Create table is a statement in the structured query language, SQL. Because SQL is an industry standard language, the create table statement can be used to create tables in most DBMSs. Portability across DBMSs is only for basic parts of the create table statement because most DBMS vendors have proprietary extensions of the statement. If you've never used a computer language before, getting the syntax correct can be a challenge. One missing comma can spoil your entire day. The DBMS will be exacting on your usage of correct syntax. The syntax for the create table statement is not difficult if you've used computer languages before. The best way to learn the statement is to mimic examples. Before mimicking examples, let's look briefly at the components of the create table statement. This syntax is really simplified to the essential parts of the statement covered in this course. The statement begins with the keywords create table. Following the create table keywords, you need a left parenthesis. Inside the parentheses, you need a list of columns and an optional list of constraints. In the syntax, the square brackets mean that the element is optional. A column list involves a column name and optional inline constraints. After the column list, you have an optional list of external constraints. This lesson will just cover the column definitions. The next lesson will show examples of constraints, both inline and external. Now you are really ready to learn the create table statement by seeing examples. Let's look at the create table statement for the student table. For each column, the column name and data type are specified. Data types indicate the kind of data, character, numeric, and so on, and permissible operations such as numeric operations and string operations, such as subset, for the column. Each data type has a name, for example, char for character, and usually a length specification. It is vital to pay close attention to the syntax. DBMS compilers, that is software that reads SQL statements, are very exacting. Here are some notes about the syntax shown in the statement. Keywords must be spelled exactly. For example, misspelling table as TBLE will cause the syntax errors. Database compilers, unfortunately, do not have spelling correction to help you. Each column definition is terminated by a comma. A missing comma will result in a syntax error with a message that will not be easy to understand. The entire statement terminates with a right parenthesis. A key part of a column definition is the data type specification. In this course, we will use standard SQL data types. Char, C-H-A-R, means a fixed length character string, or text. The number in parentheses indicates the maximum length. The DBMS will always store the maximum length for char columns. So you should use this data type for columns with the same length, such as two character abbreviations for state names. Varchar means a variable length character string. The number in parentheses indicates the maximum length. The DBMS will always store the length actually used for the value, not the maximum length. 
so you should use this data type for columns with varying length, such as student names. Note that Oracle uses varchar2 instead of the SQL standard varchar. Integer indicates a whole number, that is numbers without a decimal point. Use this data type for columns with numbers such as age and years. Float indicates a number with a floating precision, such as interest rates and scientific calculations. The precision parameter p indicates a number of significant digits. Decimal indicates a number with a fixed precision, such as monetary amounts. The w indicates the total number of digits, and the r indicates the number of digits to the right of the decimal point. Use the date data type for columns with dates and times. Some systems support three data types, date, time, and timestamp, while other systems support a combined data type, date, storing both the date and time. Let's wrap up this lesson giving initial details about the create table statement. You've learned the basic syntax of the create table statement, covering column definitions. The create table statement is an important definitional statement because it's relative portability across DBMSs. Portability is only relative, however, because of numerous vendor extensions to the standard syntax. Even data types are not standard across DBMSs. Because the syntax is somewhat tedious, most DBMS vendors have developed visual interfaces for increased productivity when creating and modifying table definitions. Now let's return to one of the initial questions at the beginning of the lesson. How can a missing comma ruin your day when writing create table statements.